All right, howlers, let's get howling. But first, a couple quick warnings. First warning, this podcast contains adult content. Don't be a pixie. Second warning, this podcast contains spoilers for the entire Red Rising saga. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Etsy. Email us, howlerpod at gmail.com. And visit us at howlerpod.com. And on YouTube, subscribe. Wow, that was hardcore. We're raising it aggressively today. You like scrunched your face up. (laughs) And rate and review us five stars only. If you don't give us five stars only, oh man, we don't have chapters this week. Then we'll stop podcasting forever. (laughs) Forever. (laughs) And now, Howler Pod. Hello, Howlers. Welcome to Howler Pod, your podcast for all things Red Rising, where every episode we dive deep to break down, celebrate, and discuss all aspects of the fantastic Red Rising saga by Howler number one, Pierce Brown. Ow, ow. I am your host, Ben Reinert. I am joined today, as always, by the amazing Aaron Ayers. Hello, Howlers. Aaron, what are we doing today? We have our howler mailbag it's a full episode of howler mailbag we've got a lot of emails voicemails dms thank you howlers yes. for putting in the work for this episode <laughs> this is all you guys let's go ahead and dive in to that mailbag huh you're not gonna load up anything i guess we can load up the star shell and shoot straight into the howler mailbag we'd probably rip through it mm, yeah slowly <laughs> orbit the howler mailbag we're, yeah, yeah we're gonna spin around it hopefully we don't shit our suits perfect okay ben let's start with an email okay our first email comes from timothy timothy says uh he just started listening to the podcast thank you for the kind words he says we're doing a great job i am doing a great job <laughs> Uh, Timothy says, Lyria refusing the repair of her parasite, while disappointing, was spot on for her character. I think one of the most driving characteristics of Reds is the regard with which they hold their family. It's why they were able to keep them in the mines, competition against other communities. And what's it's what ultimately drove Darrow to rise. Rise! <laughs> his motivation to avenge uh, aggression towards his family or clan. And so Lyria, so succinctly deciding to not take something she has yearned for is kind of on point for me. Also, when you guys mentioned your guest coming and liking to cook, I confused Netflix with YouTube and stale cracker came to mind. If you haven't seen his videos, please take a minute and watch one to join me on that hilarious thought experiment. He's ridiculous. And it's all the more funny because my kids quote him all the time just a thought nice i'll check that out all right he says omnis verlupus tim thank Thank you you, tim Tim. and we agree i think we're well established well i'm well established about lyria yes you are a little less well i i like to dream of other futures including one where she's a super spy And next email is from Jeremy Morning Howlers. That's how I'm reading it. That's not necessarily. I wanted to message and say how much I'm enjoying your podcast. Thank you. I've read the Red Rising books since they first came out alongside my best mate, but he hasn't. Oh, this. I went too country. I should have been my best mate. (laughs) (laughs) Was that New Zealand? He's from England. God damn it. (laughs) Do you want to start over I and need, read the whole thing? I need it? Nick to <laughs> yeah. to read it. Okay. But he hasn't been able to read, <laughs> to read Lightbringer yet. So having you go over the rereads is like being able to chat about it with my mates. Tell your mates to catch the fuck up. Okay. <laughs> also wanted to mention my favorite paragraph of the whole book, which I think is chapter 48. Severo has found out that his son is dead. I copied the text below. Pierce manages to write epic gory battles, but also beautiful and profound stuff like this gets me every time. And the chapter 48 quote is in the cold prison of our minds. We are alone with our self-hatred, our doubts and guilt. No one more than Severo. 
A friend may reach through the bars and hold our hand, but they can't open the door for us. Only the prisoner has the key. All I can do is remind him we're waiting for him when he gets out. Gets me every time, too. Yes, that's such a good quote. Call out, Jeremy. Good job, Jeremy from Surrey in England. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) There's could be a Surrey over here. Yeah. We don't know about it. (laughs) Thank you. This one's from Jen G. What's up, Jen G? And it's it's Jen G. (laughs) Jen G. Not like Jumanji. Jinji Manji. Jinji Manji. <laughs> Jinji Manji. Uh, this one, I like the subject line on this email. It's Sweet Veil, vale, the ham. The ham. I want ham. <laughs> Low Howler Pod. There is a scene in the last set of chapters near the beginning of Mustang's meeting where she tells them about her parlay with dipshit, where Victra <laughs> is described as reclining back in a chair, legs spread, her whiskey on her chest. I desperately need to see art of that. She's probably dressed. Miles. <laughs> yeah, this calling Miles. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably dressed impeccably, but I could uh, see her also at this meeting in her PJs and fuzzy bunny slippers. Do you think Victor has fuzzy, fuzzy bunny, bunny slippers? slippers? Maybe with like hidden spikes inside <laughs> or something right. like that. You know, like the boot knives that Roan has. Except bunny slippers. I'm catching it with my hand. (laughs) And then Jen goes on to say, uh, I have a recommendation. If you all are looking for a great read or a listen, the audible versions are excellent. Check out Jason Pargan, formerly published under the pseudonym David Wong. The John Dies at the End books are a festival of absurd cosmic Horror comedy. That, that sounds fun. <laughs> that was a hard sentence. <laughs> My brain went <laughs> all, all kinds over of the places. Place. Uh, the Zoe Ash books, the first of which is Futuristic Violence and Fancy Suits, great title, are fantastic. They're all fun, fast reads. He's also done some really excellent prose pieces on Cracked. I look forward to seeing where Pierce goes after these books. I have high hopes of him joining Pargan as my all time favorite author. This was not a paid advertisement, just dorky enthusiasm. We love it. We love dorky enthusiasm. I wouldn't uh, use these names as first names slash baby names. So this is for our our Canadian friend, Frankie, uh, who needs to name his baby. Do you think Frankie's had his baby? uh, Frankie. Frankie, we need an update. Where you been? And what did you name the baby? Uh, But Figment or Pebble would be a great middle or nickname. That's... A good point. I like that. I like Pebble as a as a nickname for a young cute. a young babe. A young babe. <laughs> okay. Let's do another email. Quick silvers. Quick silvers eyeball ring is the subject line from Stephanie. Lopen and Aaron. Sorry. This is gonna be short. That's great. We love it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we we have triple reading, so <laughs> out loud. I was Thinking about when Quicksilver would always play with the eyeball ring, and he did that for 35 years or something, but then he gave it to Darrow, so now out of habit, he'll probably be picking his bare finger. (laughs) Maybe Mateo will try him for that. Manners. Been enjoying the recaps. Thank you for all your hard work. Omnisphere lupus, Stephanie. (laughs) Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. (laughs) That is funny to think about him messing with his ring. Well, That's not there anymore. You know, you've seen people have habits like that right next up we've got a video voicemail finally <laughs> another one and another one ross okay. is our brave uh video voicemailer is Ro- ross sent in the first and only he did yeah thank you ross still to this day all right here it goes what's up Aller Pond? this is ross checking in from memphis uh if no one else is going to do the drone voicemails i'll or video voicemail sorry i'll uh I'll keep it going here. I'm uh, catching a little daytime buzz while I'm capping off the uh, the work day, waiting on a spreadsheet to unfreeze. I had a shower thought this morning that you know I thought I'd get your opinion on, and so I'm thinking of Severo just being really mopey and kind of a dick to Darrow, and rightfully so. But you know, ever since Iron Gold, we see him kind of change, and uh, I'm thinking at some point, why doesn't Darrow just be like, dude, you got my fucking eyeballs in your skull? 
You replace your eyeballs with my old eyeballs. Lay it off, dude. You're in love with me. We're, we're cool. This will pass. You know, it just, just fucking knock it off, man. Like, it, we're, we're all good. In the end, we're all good. And then, I guess I had a question for you. And, it, and I guess it's, at, at this point, it'll be last week's chapters. But, you know, we're, we're talking about Atlas and all the stuff out in the rim and the Kuiper belt and whatever he's doing, you know, in the shadows and scaring him with being the boogeyman. And I'm thinking that might be one of the coolest things that I'm looking forward to whenever we finally get a live adaptation. And it's just, I guess my question is just what are you looking forward to? And you probably said it multiple times, but maybe your opinion's changed. I don't know. I think everyone's obviously looking forward to the Iron Rain. Um, you'd be crazy not to be looking forward to that. And, uh, but me, it's, for me, it's it's probably Atlas just, just being the boogeyman out in the, uh, out in the Kuiper belt there. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Cheers. Have a good weekend. Thank you, Ross. And your hair looks great. It grew out. See, how are we supposed to know what you guys look like unless you send in video voicemails? I noticed Ross had a hair tie, which means that could nice. be a man bun. Get a man bun in there. Yeah. Love that. Let's see a man bun next time. <laughs> I think that's a great point. First of all, like not enough is made of the eyeballs. The eyeball situation. Yeah. I'd probably bring that up all the time if you had my eyeballs in your head. They'd both be brown. It would be, <laughs> you wouldn't be able to tell. Or Darrow could like be like, bro, maybe you need new eyeballs. Those are my red mine yeah. eyeballs. You can't see very far yeah. with those. You can't see two feet in front of you, bro. <laughs> Do you think they enhanced him? I, I think, think he just has bad to. eyesight. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think they would have to. Yeah. And uh, then what are you looking forward to uh, in an adaptation? I'll go first. I <laughs> love to hear it. <laughs> I really can't wait to see Deep Grave, like the movie, uh, like the the actual building, mm-hmm. like how it moves along the surface mm-hmm. of the, the ocean floor. Yeah. Pretty cool. I am looking forward to, I will say, hmm, maybe the Storm God sequence. I'm just thinking of, I'm got, I'm, it's terrifying. I've got this image in my head from Mad Max Fury Road. Where yeah. they're driving into the storm, uh, and I just Steampunk want for yes, sure. like I want that on screen. Mm-hmm. I would like to see that, and then like Orion just going like more power. <laughs> 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 like, <yeah. laughs> oh, also, fun. there were tons of things from Lightbringer that would be cool to see, but the where they're like flying through, seeing the grottos and mm-hmm. like the moonies. For things that we are like actually going to get to see, because these are later stuff, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure like how far the series is going to go, right? Forever, sure. um, hopefully. But <laughs> uh, one thing from the first book that I really want to see is that first like race between Darrow and Cassius. Yeah, I always come back to that moment. To the it's, cornucopia, it's fantastic. You can kind of see it in Hunger Games. Yeah, except better. Way better. In Red Rising. Okay, thank you, Ross. Yes. And thank you for being brave and submitting video voicemails. And cheers. cheers Sorry, to you. I don't have, we didn't have beer, so this is <laughs> bubbly water. <laughs> it's filled with vodka. It's pretty good. Just kidding. All right. Our next email comes from Mitchell. From uh, Oklahoma. From Oklahoma. Nice. Oh. Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the uh, Mitchell says, <laughs> hey, Howlers, I just want to mention that Severo made a big deal about Ham while on the Archimedes. This is a fun callback to Red Rising when we first meet Fitchner in the Institute, and he's also eating Ham. Ah, wow. Good that's job, good. Mitchell. It's a good one, Mitchell. And then he goes, uh, oh, and one more thing I noticed before Severo and Cassius fight, they are talking smack to each other. Severo calls Cassius hollow. The name Cassius means hollow in Latin. Where you been? Just thought it was interesting since Cassius is such a tragic character in a lot of ways. Great little... Those are some Cassie tidbits right there, Mitchell. Yes. Cassie level tidbits. Good job. Thanks, Mitchell. Next up, we have an email from Kyle. Ben and Aaron, finally, it took us forever to catch up with the rereads and write an email. 
I have been a listener since you started and got my fiance started on the series and podcast soon after. We love the pod and Bryn messages Aaron on Instagram from time to time and considers her to be a close friend. Bryn, hello. <laughs> my close friend, Bryn. My, <laughs> my close friend, Bryn. That's what I always say. <laughs> Now let's get to it, starting with this week's chapters. I'm going to bypass the Lysander chapters because by the Lysander and because it's my email. I you can do that. I appreciate it, Kyle. I myself like wanted to skip over <laughs> <laughs> reading this. Uh, Kyle says Cassius and Darrow fighting together again, finally. An amazing duo that clearly has history and fights with an incredible fluidity obviously you could just say that it's because razor master cassius has been training darrow on the archie but i'd like to think it goes much deeper i'd like to give credit to their past conquests in the institute and the penultimate takedown of octavia in morningstar also their duel in the gala gala yay kyle wrote gala gala <laughs> uh taught them a lot about each other's fight style that was a weird i was clapping really weirdly you were doing like a nutty professor. Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> Hercules. Okay. Uh, the Gaelic Gala taught them a lot about each other's fight style that helps them anticipate the other's moves. Regardless of the why, I love seeing the band get back together and kick some ass. So do we, Kyle. Possibly my favorite part of these chapters is Darrow finally coming back into his own as a leader by trusting and leaning on his friends. Trusting Ari to get to the Omega Torch and get a hold of Athena. Trusting Cassius and Severo can work together without killing each other. <laughs> Trusting Diomedes to hold up to his word while building a relationship necessary for the future of the Republic. And finally, following Cassius into a fight that they shouldn't get involved in, but doing it anyways because it's the right thing to do. Sometimes it's hard to separate the good guys from the bad guys, but this is a great example of why we are on the right side. The honor or Cassius need I say more. You do Hell not. yeah, brother. But Kyle does say more. Finally, let's put our tinfoil hats on and dive into Ben's Conspiracy Corner. Oh, Saddle up because we're going to dive deep. <laughs> this is just full of hallerpod isms. <laughs> Darrow has been fading as a fighter and leader since the start of Iron Gold. Despite his best efforts, he can't quite make the right moves or even listen to reason when his wife and closest friends are pointing him in the right direction. For fuck's sake, couldn't he, he couldn't even beat Lysander on horseback. Well, Darrow historically cannot ride horses. <laughs> That's one of that his true. main flaws. This is, a weakness. Yeah. this is where Mustang could have come in and <laughs> done some trick riding. Okay, Kyle says, what if he just needed a factory reset? <laughs> What if his carving made him more than just a gold? He gets one light wave treatment at Quicksilver's mm. asteroid, and all of a sudden he's back and better than ever? Is Darrow the first successful human-AI hybrid? Wow, we're deep in the corner now. <laughs> it's been... what? What's Inspector Gadget? <laughs> what's that called? The cyborg? Cyborg. Yeah. This guy. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> it's been proven... Uh, is, is Inspector Gadget a cyborg? I, I think he or would he's qualify. just a guy with, with tricks. No, I think okay, he's, okay. he's a cyborg. Anyways, it's been proven already that AI can be created and pass as Paco Bells even when tested. Why not human? <laughs> We're in his head, though. Wouldn't he be like... <laughs> I'm a robot. <laughs> Ones and zeros. <laughs> <laughs> like the big man. Okay. Kyle says, it would explain his ability to always overcome the odds and overwhelming circumstances in the original trilogy. He was created to be one... of uh, he was created to be the ultimate warlord, the rising needed in the core. After winning the fight, he continues to spend the next 10 years as the same warlord. He has a hard time changing in the new world he created because it's not how he was programmed. Wow. Beep, boop, bop. This has gone full Terminator. <laughs> Terminator. <laughs> he's full robot. Yeah. Or is he cyborg? No, he's a robot. Yeah. Yeah. With the eye. Yeah. Up uh, up until the meeting with Quick, he continues to folly and his friends pick up the slack for him. The treatment at Quicksilver's asteroid explains why he was able to jump higher and move faster than in years. I just think it like it was like the 10-man oiled him up. Okay, that was me. 
Kyle says, let's compare the <laughs> duel with Apollonius earlier in the book with the duel with Fa, and there's a massive discrepancy that can't be explained by simply training with Cassius as much as we love him. I'm going to interject again. What about the path of stone? Yeah. You ever heard of the path? Ever, <laughs> you ever heard of it? <laughs> okay. Maybe this gives Darrow a chance to change and be the father to Pax and husband mm. to Mustang they deserve. Maybe he doesn't have to die after all. Okay, I like that part. I like that. Speaking of Pax, uh, is he the first child because he's the first natural born human AI hybrid? <laughs> oh, we're still going. <laughs> <laughs> he has abilities that humans of any color do not. Maybe it's not the mind's eye. Maybe it's more. Maybe he's... A red god. Mm. Maybe I'm just crazy. Who knows? But it's been fun to think about it. <laughs> Omnisphere lupus, motherfucker. I'm really proud Ooh. of that one. That's a good that one. That's good. That's <laughs> from Brent and Kyle. And P.S. Your close friend, Brent. My close friend, Brent. P.S. I do know. I do know who Brent is. By <laughs> the way. It sounds like I'm joking. <laughs> P.S. At the at. At the Adela Atlanta. I was trying to say <laughs> Atalantia. I'm like, no, that's just Atlanta. P.S. At the Atlanta book signing, someone asked about Holiday's husband and if we would get more information on that. Holiday's husband. Mustang says you talk to your husband with that mouth, that smart mouth. Really? Mm-hmm. Holiday has a husband? Oh, I have no idea. Uh... He referenced a conversation between Mustang and Holiday where she mentions her husband. Pierce got a bit quiet about it and said, yes, we'll learn more about him. <laughs> okay. Well, my thought is Pierce probably forgot about that. I've got a crazy conspiracy corner. I didn't know Holiday had a husband. That's it's Roan T. Flavinius. But he's dead. He's now dead, but that's why she didn't want to go fight him in the hallway. Well, maybe it's because he's really good. Because she's scared? No, because. That's what I'm it's saying. Rogue. She wouldn't be scared. But maybe if she loved him once, she didn't want to kill him. Wow. Well, I guess we will find out. Or Pierce did forget completely that he wrote a dog into the story. So <laughs> maybe he forgot about yeah, this. Yeah, he may be dropping some red herrings there. To yeah. Try to lead people astray. Thank you so much, Bryn and Kyle. All right, our next email is from Melissa. In chapter 50, when Atlas and Fa are talking, there is this passage. Some things we cannot wash off, Vagnar. Once she realizes who you really are, who you really serve, she will abandon you, especially if she believes the Volk should have their own kingdom. You know my own hardship in that. The two go quiet perhaps thinking of a tragedy that befell Atlas some time ago. I feel like that last part has to reference why Atlas was banished to the Rim. I know there was a lot of speculation that Atlas was romantically involved with Lysander's mom. Could this further hint to that? I want to know the reason he was banished so badly, but I'm worried we will never know how, now that he's dead. Then again, Pierce will hopefully expand on Lysander's brain diddling and his parents' death, <laughs> so maybe we will find out. Any thoughts on why Atlas was really sent to the rim? Probably because he's fucking creepy. <laughs> Just straight creepiness. You're too creepy. You cannot be here. Nope, not you. <laughs> You're creepy. <laughs> I like this theory a lot. It does feel like there's something uh, involved with Lysander's parents and Atlas. Well, they were like besties. Explaining the reason for him getting sent out there. They were close, and yeah, and then... Octavia had them killed, so maybe she sent Atlas away so he didn't, like, find out about it? Or does he already know that situation? I don't know. Atlas has to know. I would assume he would. Maybe he exiled himself. Yeah. Because he Because he was protect heartbroken. Him. Yeah. It's like Harry Potter and Snape. Spoiler. <laughs> yeah, spoiler. <laughs> uh, Lily's hazel eyes. I could... I could, I could that was the Get secret garden, but which is also Harry Potter. I have no idea what you're talking about. Great. Some people do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Melissa goes on to say, also, do we know if the ship that Cassius and Darrow 
uh, liberated is one of the ones Atlas infected with diseases. I, I was wondering. He said the ships were already off to the Kuiper, so hopefully this was not one of them. I forgot about the diseases in my first read. I'm pretty sure the Rim is trying to intercept those ships at the end of Lightbringer, so I'm worried about what that will mean for the Republic in terms of additional support. Wow. That mm -hmm. is kind of a bummer. <laughs> I didn't think about well, that. Well, I kind of think <laughs> those ships aren't the infected ones because Atlas said, like, those are long gone, and then the ships you guys will be saving aren't infected, basically. So I, I know think the, the ones the that are within... that were infected were the Askamani ships. Yeah. So I think the one that they saved was being used by the Volk. So I don't think it would have been infected. Well... Right. No, I think it's Askamani still. Or there wasn't any Askamani there, though. When they... It was Scarred and his crew. It was all Volk guys. I don't know. Uh, and So, yeah. I mean, this is a good but one. I think, I think it, it's a good thing to keep in mind, for the, sure. The way I thought of it was that the ones that were infected were already, like, too far away. Because Atlas did plan for Lysander to come in and liberate. Right low colors from the ships as well. But I think they were going to go try and chase those ships down that left. But I'm saying, I think they were like long gone. Light speed? Light speed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good. <laughs> we got that one figured out. We got it figured out. All Thanks, right. Melissa. <laughs> that's how, those that, were good thoughts. That's I like how that I stay happy. That's fine. <laughs> it's going to be fine. The next one is from Jess. Uh, it says, you guys are great. Thank you. Good morning. This is coming to you from the frozen tundra that is North Dakota. Wow. I just want to say that I love your podcast. You guys are very entertaining and do a great job breaking down and discussing the chapters. Thank you. How was Cassius Hilarious this week has been my favorite segment. Me too. And may I suggest a new segment? Yes, you may. How <laughs> was Lysander a pixie ass bitch this week? <laughs> Dang it. We should have done this one. We should have. Redo. <laughs> we'll redo them all. Now I'm going to jump into Ben's conspiracy corner wow. for a minute. What if Holiday is it's waiting? Hot today. <laughs> what if Holiday is waiting for the right time to kill Mustang? Mm. Like waiting until Darrow is home and attempts to kill her right in front of him, but not close enough for him to save <laughs> <Brutal>. her. <laughs> Why wouldn't she have done that? I guess he's been on... He's been Mercury gone. and stuff. Like how Trig died. Damn. Damn. Now, I believe Holiday is loyal and this won't happen, but it's just a thought. <laughs> Howlers are dark, man. <laughs> also, if Mustang dies, the last four books are dead to me. Same. Agreed. And now a baby name. <laughs> Quinn. Uh, I do like Quinn. That's a good one. I loved Quinn. I really wanted to see more of her, and it was super sad when she died. I love Victra, but really wanted to see Quinn and Severo together. They would have been sweet. Yeah. That's all for now. Omnis for Lupus. Ooh, from Jess. Thank you, Jess. Thank you. All right. First off, Lysander needs to die. I know it goes without saying, but it also needs to be said out loud more. Yes. It needs to be at least equal to the jackal's tongue getting ripped out and him cracking and then getting hanged that being said what are your thoughts about lysander in regard to the song buried in the murder by the lonely wild pb has said several times that if he was a song or had a song to represent him for this book it would be this one it's on the lightbringer playlist he made i listened to it to prepare for lightbringer to be released i really liked this song but after the hanger, it makes more sense and hits so much harder and even makes me actually feel sorry for him. Not possible. What songs would you pick to represent some of your favorite characters for Lightbringer? That's tough. Do you have songs? For, uh, for when... <laughs> I have one. For when Darrow finds the Path of Stone and is like becoming self-actualized, it's this song it's called my ego dies in the end <laughs> <laughs> it's really good hold on let me figure out who it's by but it's on my like most played songs from oh, nice. last year it's by jensen mcrae 
and she has a beautiful voice. Wow. But Darrow's ego dies in the <laughs> end. <laughs> uh, I've got one. Do you remember the old church hymn on eagle's wings? Yes. That's for Cassius. And he was on eagle's wings. That's Cassius. My mom song. sings that at every <laughs> funeral we go to. I'm serious. It's a good one. <laughs> it's a banger from the church yeah. days. Uh, so yeah, check out on eagle's wings. Or t- yeah, <laughs> you've probably heard it. If you've been to any <laughs> Christian funeral, I guess. <laughs> okay, okay, one final thing: the guy that wanted to name his unborn child after a character from the series. Dude, I'm so glad we're getting so <laughs> many. We're and wanted thinking. name ideas should, at the very least, refer to the unborn child as the abomination. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of like a clone of him, but he has to say it like a boxing announcer and only around his wife, depending on his and her sense of humor or that. until she agrees on a name belonging to a staple character like Julian. I like that. The abomination. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Send you. Thank you. Okay. We got Gen G again. Nice. Nice. Gen G. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Valdir and Darrow sitting in a tree is the subject line. Ooh. Low Haller Pod. So are we all just going to ignore the whole Valdir, the unrequited, plus Darrow, the oblivious thing? <laughs> the, <laughs> there's little about it that isn't comedy gold. Hear me out. I doubt Valdir, king of the melodrama spires, <laughs> has been subtle. It's all but an in-joke amongst the good guys. You know Severo and prob- probably other howlers gave them both shit about it at one point or another. I bet that at least once Sev told Valdir that Reap expected him for dinner, knowing that Valdir would show up in his sexiest <laughs> black leather. Q Virginia choking on her drink, answering the door and trying to cover young Pax's eyes. Or Valdir showing up to war practice or whatever one does between battles to stay sharp. I don't know, dude. I'm a scientist. <laughs> showing up in gym shorts and a tank top that says, Reap me, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I need that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Except it's an old Nagal and Darrow never looked that close. That's good. So Jen is shipping Valdir and Darrow. Cassie had some fan fiction the other week and now Jen G seems to be writing her own fan fiction. Nice. It's it's uh, Red Rising Smut. <laughs> I've never been in on the <laughs> fan fiction game, but I think during this next break, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into it. Our next email comes from Sharice. They say, hear me out. I think that Rhea Ripley should play Victor. I agree. Yep. Done. Yeah, done. <laughs> Cast. We are so in on that. We both I have photos of me dressed up as Rhea, Rhea Ripley. Ripley. Yes. It's incredible. Mommy. <laughs> if you don't know who Rhea Ripley is, Look her up. Look her up. She's incredible. She's WWE, WWE wrestler. She's awesome. And she is buff. And I follow her on Instagram and I'm always like, damn. She's very cool. That is a great casting choice for Victor. I would be all about it. Thank you, Cherise. Next up, the <laughs> the subject line is Lysander is a see you next Tuesday, but it's spelled out. I'm not sure <laughs> if I'm allowed to say that. Howler Pod contains adult content. Adult content. <laughs> Lysander is a cunt. <laughs> I agree. From Jack. <laughs> Hey, Aaron and Ben, I had to email in because of what is happening this episode. First of all, I need to say that Atlas is probably my favorite villain in the series, and I thought him going down to Darrow or Cassius was the only proper way for him to go out. I was super excited when Cassius defeated him, but super pissed when Lysander just shot him in the head. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Also, did he tends it, to do that. He tends you... to be a bitch and a cunt, <laughs> as you said. Also, did anyone think that Roan was badass in this scene? Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> uh, I was fully cheering for him against Lysander. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, anyway, totally. I was on the fence about Lysander up until this point in the book. Whoa, mm. Jack. You made it way too far. <laughs> <laughs> what about Alexander? <laughs> <sighs> So up until this point in the book and before clang, 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 my favorite moment of Lightbringer was Lysander's speech to the 200. Listening to TGR narrate gave me goosebumps. Once Lysander shot Cassius, I lost any respect or empathy I had for him. 
I can safely say that I am now fully on the fuck Lysander train. Welcome I think aboard. he's a pixie bitch who I can't wait to see die in Red God, <laughs> hopefully brutally. <laughs> Glad to have you, Jack. <laughs> um, side note, I'm not sure if this is true or not, but I think I'm the first person to email the pod from Wisconsin. If so, I'm happy to represent the land of beer and cheese. Hit guess lupus. <laughs> nice. I, yeah, beer and cheese. You're our first Wisconsinite, and we're, we will not check that. You're just going down yeah, in the record books. Yeah, you can be first. If you're <laughs> yeah. not first, you're last. <laughs> All right. The subject line of this email is, fuck Lysander. This is good. good. <laughs> well, and it's from Sean. And Sean says that Patrick Mahomes found the breath of stone in overtime. I'm assuming this was, oh, uh, this was, yeah, sent about uh, after the Super Bowl. So Nice. Yes. Go Chiefs. Go Chiefs. <laughs> he did find the breath of stone the way of stone now, now we have a special announcement special howler we have a happy birthday wish for <laughs> howler adrian from Asheville, North adrian Carolina. from Asheville. adrian <laughs> yum, yum, yum. the way um, it's spelled i feel like we could go with adrian adrian yeah. adrian <laughs> Happy happy birthday. Birthday is March 9th. Your howler bestie, Emily, uh, sent this in. And also, we wish you a happy birthday as well. Yes. And happy glad birthday. that your howler bestie, Emily, um, who we met in at Howler. Oh, Howler Con. Con. Yes. Mm -hmm. I almost said Howler Pod. <laughs> That's us. <laughs> yes. She you have loves a good you, friend there. And we love you too. Yes. Happy birthday. Thank you for listening. Happy birthday birthday happy birthday what's that from no idea my brain great <laughs> happy birthday adrian and now back to regularly scheduled programming all right our next one is from chris subject is the ending scene for the eventual tv series chris says so once i reached the ending of lightbringer the song one more time by blink 182 had more or less just came out I didn't know they were making new songs. <laughs> <laughs> Cross would be I upset about like, that. <laughs> Cross loves Blake Warner. Uh, as I read the part of Darrow and Severo entering Cassius's bunk, that song began to play over and over in my head. I know we are a long ways off of uh, if or slash when a TV series comes out. When? But the scene plays like a movie in my head every time. And then Chris goes on to describe a wonderful montage of just moments from the books with Darrow, Severo, Cassius, just all of the big moments like montaging to this Blink-182 song is kind of what he's talking about. So the writers of the TV show, yeah. we can forward you this email once you exist. <laughs> yes. And you know what? You know who loves a fucking montage? We do. We love a fucking montage. Oh, yeah. And so uh, this is perfect. And so if you're wanting to do this at home, put on the Blink-182 song. Think of all your favorite Cassius, Darrow, several moments. Uh, and then Chris says, as, as the song fades, fades back to Darrow and Severo, arms on each other's backs in a dark room lit only by the hollow, the glow on their faces, watching them go from triumph to sorrow to laughter one more time. Watching all the old moments play. I love it. It's great. I, I'm going to cry when that happens. I know. I would cry my <laughs> eyes out. Chris says, I'm sure there's a million things I'm forgetting. Um, and every time it's a toss up if the montage is of everything or just scenes with at least two, if not three of them. So, Omnis or Lupus, Chris. Thank you, Chris. That is beautiful. You now you've all made us shed a tear. Yes. Next up is from James from Spokane, which. I think is also Sinu. Yes, it looks like the same email address. But this is the government name. Government name. Not the Howler name. Mm -hmm. Hello, Ben and Aaron. In chapter 17, when asked on what grounds Lysander interjects, he says, on the grounds of conscience. On the grounds of conscience. <laughs> conscience, my Wait, good man. On the grounds of conscience. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> then goes on to say, there is a precedent first cited by Akari in 5 PCE. 
<laughs> That's five years into Gold's rule. Mm. What do you think Akari was taking a stand for or against? Probably from being a bitch. <laughs> like life Maybe standard. with like using the eat me. Eat me. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Or do you think they're advanced enough to make Ed me? Yeah. Well, it was Akari that put it on that moon. Maybe Akari. That's. Actually, I can't think of any other answer that would be better than that one. <laughs> James also says, oh, P.S. I wrote in, but use my howler name, Sinew. We guessed. We're good. Like we that. knew it. And we got a motherfucker earlier in this book. Chapter 12. Fell says his call sign is badass motherfucker. Nice. We should have forgot that Thank one. you, James, call, James. Sinew. Love it. Way to pay attention. I like when people pay attention for and- us. I just love that we get to talk about Fell again because he is a badass motherfucker. <sighs> Fell was a badass Miss motherfucker. Miss that guy. All right, next up we've got a voicemail. Great. Hola, mi amigos. It is it is I, the howler, called Crush. Uh, man, last week, I know everyone's probably sick of hearing me. I've already called in twice. But you know what? Last one, why not? I want to double down. And I really think like a decarve of some kind is going to happen. Maybe Darrow does it voluntarily. Said he like can't get murked by the eat me. I don't know. Something like that. I still think a D carve has to happen. It's like a William Wallace moment. You know, when the guy's like doing that publicly and then they're all there and like, no. And he's like, freedom. Oh God. Such a great movie. If you haven't watched that, go watch Braveheart. It's dope. Mel Gibson, you know, he's a little, he's a little prickly around the, the prickles. Yeah, just, I don't know. I'm really excited for this last book. He hasn't given a release date, has he? I'm Googling it right now. I don't see it. But anyway, real quick, wanted to just say that I, I noticed like a weird parallel because you guys were talking about parallelism with the words and whiskey dudes who, uh, who seem real dope. And I would definitely have some writer's tears uh, meet with those dudes for sure. Uh, also you, Aaron, because you're also a dude, dude. But yeah, so I don't know. If this is correct, someone can fact check me, but did, okay, so book one, right? AO is, is hanged publicly. It's te- televised, right? Darrow's got to pull the feet. Is that, so like from the start of the book into as many chapters, is that the same as from the back of the book to the chapter where Lysander comes on screen and shows uh, Cassie is hanging. Is there a mirroring going on there? Did Pierce do that? We just kind of miss it. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Anyway, I don't know. I can't even speculate anymore because every time I try and form a cognitive idea, it just goes to shit because this writing is so good and I'm loving it. And, uh, you know, about to go back to, to the Middle East, to Saudi Arabia. So I'm going to need something to get me through. Did you know you're not allowed to drink? Yeah. Uh, so that sucks. Also, apparently not allowed to be gay either. Very scary. So I need some book, man. I need, I need some, some good book so I can just hide in my hotel room and not be mobbed, uh, like Virginia circa dark age. That was a great book too, though. I gotta say, I really like dark age. I I don't agree with any of you who say that it's not the best book so far in the series. I'm just going to say it. Anyway, love you guys, all the howlers. You guys are great. And, man, let's all just buckle up for the end of this journey. <sighs> oh, my God. <laughs> Continually setting the voicemail my, bar. I <laughs> I never have smiled so much listening to someone in my life. Crush is such a good time. I want to go to Red Rocks and see My Morning Jacket with Crush. <laughs> yeah, we gotta we gotta hang sometime. Yeah, for sure. Like how, how the vibes are there, man. <laughs> Crush, be careful. Yes. I don't know why you're going to the Middle East, but please be He's careful. He's gotta do some archaeology. Oh fuck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, be careful out there. We'll be thinking about you. And yeah, I am a dude, and he's a dude, and she's a dude, and Ben is not a dude, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was my best evil laugh. <laughs> you had a lot of fun with that one. Crush. I would say, I think the parallels thing and like how far into oh, Red the Rising hanging. the hanging happens. I know that EO lasts for like five or six chapters, and so 
Cassius would have been. Oh, you mean chapter count? Yeah. I thought it was just like story wise. Yeah. But this isn't the end of the book. I'm pretty sure she's in the book for six chapters. Mm-hmm. And then Cassius would have been hanged in like chapter 85, which would have been like the five th- chapters from the end. So it could be pretty close. I know it's it like five even or six. To the end. Yeah. Oh, that was so so much fun. Thank you, Crush. Should we listen to it again? <laughs> 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 I'm gonna listen to it before I go to bed tonight and have great dreams about Crush. The energy, us drinking is just writer's tears, unmatched with words and whiskey and without bed. <laughs> <laughs> He's just really enjoying. I just like when people like me more than you. Oh, well, like which is all fav- the time. So. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, that's, why, that's why we're friends. So, just yeah. Boop, you, can, boop, boop. you can get that joy. That's me getting my awesome. confidence back. Thank love, you, Crush. Love that for you. <laughs> Someone write in and say you want to hang out with Ben and not me. <laughs> Just do it. Please. She's just pandering. Okay. We have another voicemail. Let's see it. Hello, Ben. Hello, Aaron. A uh, long time, first time. You guys don't know it, but you're basically my best friend because we talk about this book every day on my way to work. The only mailbag thing that I had for you was the fact that you always open up with Howler, no- Howler number one, Pierce Brown, but Howler number one is zero. Are you implying that Pierce is zero? And if you're not, then shouldn't Pierce be Howler zero? Uh, but yeah, thanks for doing what you're doing, and I hope you guys have plenty of material left because it's going to be a long time before Red God, and I won't have anything to talk about on my way to work except myself, I guess. Uh, thanks for calling in. We got a DM. We know that his name is Viet. Yes. Thank you so much for calling and we, in. And uh, we are also your best friends. And Ben <laughs> especially is your best friend. Because <laughs> he needs a best friend right now. <laughs> Been betrayed by my own best friend. I would argue, if we're arguing, that Pierce would be Ares, right? Mm, father of the rising. Father of the world. Or is thinking, he God? I was thinking more about like... Darrow is Howler number one in the fictional world and in the real world. Pierce is Howler number one. Pierce is Howler number right. one. Yes. Yeah. That's my logical explanation sure, for not? that. <laughs> and we all say it and it we it's it, it's widely accepted. <laughs> Thanks for calling in and thank you for listening. And I hope uh you can get through these next few months while we wait for Red God to come out. <laughs> we'll have more content. Soon ish. <laughs> <laughs> Let's listen to another voicemail. Let's load up this voicemail and shoot straight into my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. This is me sober. <laughs> I might leave that in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, shit. Low Howler Pod. Uh, I was just listening to episode 110, uh, and I heard that spot where Ben goes, uh, and they find Fa's head in a box. And I knew, I knew that Aaron was going to go, it's my head in a box, and then you did, and it was amazing, and I loved it. And you guys rock, and uh, keep up the great work. Love the show. I woo! No name, we, but <laughs> I see some people think in song it's as well. It's another person that likes you more than I me. bet they know what yeah. Lily's hazel eyes. <laughs> They'll have to call back <laughs> and let us know. She has her eyes. She has her eyes. Except tenors. It's boys. Right. Right. I didn't get any of that again. I'm going to make you listen to it. You're going to you're going to drive home and be like, "Yes." It's a great song. Thank you, and I'm glad that we mind fucked. <laughs> we brain diddled each other. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is going down. This is way you off the get rails. me out of here. All right. Our next email comes from Alessia. 
Alicia. Alicia. From the UK. Okay, Ben, let's hear your accent. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I'm Alicia, far away Italian howler riding from the UK. I could do a very offensive <laughs> Italian accent right now, but I will not. <laughs> We're this close. <laughs> We don't need to get canceled. (laughs) I've been reading Red Rising for 10 years now, and I've always felt quite lonely in my passion for my favorite saga. I recently discovered your podcast, and it was like finding some friends I don't know I had. I've missed the old seasons at real time, but it was truly great following you after Lightbringer. Uh, Although my husband called me crazy for replying out loud to stuff (laughs) said in a recording. Never mind. My honor remains. Alicia, your honor remains. And I did my Italian hands. (laughs) Uh, a big thank you then. I look forward to listening to you once Red God is out. I do believe Daryl will die. And I'm oh. sure your podcast will help mend my broken heart. You'll need to mend my broken heart. A little question question for you. What's the character reunion you're looking forward to the most in Red God? It's Darrow and Pax for me. Pax has changed so much and so is Darrow. So I really don't know what to expect. I'm sure Pierce won't let us down that's a really good one and it says p.s fuck lysander <laughs> p.s fuck lysander sorry <laughs> thank you alicia I, I always say low husband low wife mm-hmm. but i kind of i want to hit so hard though. severo victra yeah because there... i'm also nervous about it because <laughs> i'm worried he's gonna like oh the brain diddle thing yeah i'm mm-hmm. less worried now but it could happen how about you i would say low husband low wife is just gonna that's darren mustang yeah that's gonna be like an atom bomb exploding it's gonna be so cool in your chest yeah your heart's gonna explode and you're gonna drop dead it's just gonna be and then the next character reunion that i'm looking forward to is darrow and apollonius Ooh, <laughs> i found you <laughs> a reaper <laughs> <laughs> finally <laughs> An opponent worthy of... I don't know. (laughs) I'm not Thomas. I can't (laughs) do Apollonius speeches. Okay, next up, we have an email. Virginia informant on Luna. Ah. Mm. Conspiracy. From Jack. Hello, Howlers. It's been a minute since I read Lightbringer. Looking to start my third reread here shortly, though. I was wondering what you guys think about Virginia's informant on Luna. It's mentioned briefly, I think, before the Battle of Phobos that she has somebody on the inside. Of the known characters, I think the only person who makes sense at all is Abominadrius. Maybe Lilith is losing control of him and his clone just wants to be a brother to Virginia. Mm -hmm. Jack from Michigan. Michigan's in the rear view now. (laughs) I changed keys halfway through that. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like you nailed it to me. Um... You know that song, right? No. Oh, my God. Uh, I don't know songs. It's the Milk Carton Kids. Ugh, it's like such a sad song. The Milk Carton Kids? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is that? I'll send it to you. Okay. Jack knows because he's from Michigan. <laughs> yes, we, we 100% think it's Abominadrius. We're with you, Jack. The end. Our next email comes from Kirsten. This is the only mailbag you need is the subject line. It's fuck, Mary kill, several Cassius Darrow. Would you like to go first? And then Kristen says, also, Aaron, be my BFF when you get the chance, please. Another person that likes you. I'm available. Wow. I'm available. (laughs) I'm available for BFFs. (laughs) It could be Kirsten. I am going to obviously marry Cassius. I'm going to fuck Darrow and I'm going to kill several. Because you scared to fuck Severo? Severo is <laughs> scary and stinky. I can't do body odor. <sighs> His nails. Yeah. It's just in the toenails thing. Yeah. It's too many disgusting habits. Fungus. I would fuck Cassius because he's a fuck boy. And that's <laughs> what he's there for. I would marry Darrow mm. as well because, mm. you know, he's, he's nice. Marriage material. <laughs> he's marriage material. And I would also kill <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get canceled. <laughs> I just, the toenails, it's the toenails. I mean, it's and the question. I mean, I'm, I don't know if I'm as adventurous as Victra. <laughs> if you know what I, I mean. just can't do smells. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Kirsten. Thank you. Fuck, Mary kill. 
This is our last voicemail. No howlers. This is Dave calling from Baltimore. First time caller. I'm very excited. Uh, don't really have any theories to talk about. Just wanted to call and say how much I love the podcast. I've uh, been listening since the pandemic started. I'm excited about all these new episodes. They're great. I'm just catching up now. I was a, a, a reader of Red Rising starting back uh, when uh, Morningstar came out and have been just hooked ever since. I also like to think of myself as somewhat of a Red Rising pyramid scheme person as my goal uh, in life is to just convert as many people as possible. And I've been pretty successful, including getting my in-laws to read it and family members to read it. And whenever I hear people talking about books, I ask, hey, have you read Red Rising? Because you should. And by the way, there's a cool podcast named Howler Pod that you should check out. So uh, thanks for the podcast. Really love it. And uh, love the last part of the podcast, which is what are you into this week? What am I into this week, you ask? Oh, I'll tell you. Uh, just reading uh, a book called The Will of the Many. Uh, if you like Red Rising, I think you would really like this. It's a lot of stark similarities, but a uh, really interesting story. And uh, I think you should check it out. All right. Have a good one. Oh! Dave from Baltimore. That was a lovely uh, voicemail, Dave. Thank you very much. It's lovely. The Will of the Many. I haven't read that. Thank you for spreading the good word about the books. Did it pyramid scheme? I know when he said I was, I'm a I red was rising a pyramid. I thought he was about to be like, I'm really into the pyramid. The pyramid. <laughs> I was like, whoa, oh, where's this going, Dave? Okay, <laughs> Baltimore. But no, he's he's spreading the good word about red rising the books and getting yes. people into reading. So them. for it to be a pyramid scheme, it means some of us should be making money. <laughs> no. So I guess we're not. Only the people at the very top. Yeah. We haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> we're, all, we're too many levels down. Yeah. yeah. We're browns. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for calling in, Dave. Hello, Howlers. We almost forgot Cassie's tidbits. We have some more tidbits. Luckily, your friendly neighborhood podcast editor is here to save the day. Let's hear those tidbits. Hello, Howler. Just a quick few minutes of wrap-up, leftover tidbits to share. And the first one is called Tickled Pink, and it's just from a previous submitted tidbit that was written and Ben read. And while I appreciate Ben's acumen in reading Legio X and Legio XX as 10 and 20, it did kill the already terrible joke of Legio XXX menage a trois. <laughs> and two... Who are you wearing? The atmospherist Diomedes pulls up Atlas's sleeve aboard the Dustmaker to reveal the grafted Helios arm called back to the Red Wedding moment in Game of Thrones when Lady Catelyn pulled up Roose Bolton's sleeve to reveal chainmail. 3. Ugh, Lysander. When Octavia and Darrow are playing their game of truth or truth, she tells him her greatest fear is that Lysander will grow up to be like her father, Ovidius Aulun. Her second greatest fear was the inevitability of age, which Darrow kindly helped her get over. Not that I give a gory piss about how Octavia would feel about this, but has the first fear come to fruition? I say yay. And from what I could find on Ovidius, it was said that he used Senate resources to wipe out a house, and apparently ruled for too long. I don't know when he took over, but with Lysander being the age that he is, if he takes over, you know, in the span of the rest of the story, I doubt that he would step down at some point. So as far as Lysander goes, he has been systematically working his way through the Raw family, which is kind of poetic if you take it in the sense of, you know, Loon working against Ra as in the sun god Egyptian Ra, so has has that kind of poetic beauty in it. And to be fair to Lysander, the Ra family did a good chunk of that wiping out by themselves, especially at the hand of Dido, and they're at war now because of Lysander is terrible. So I guess his violence is not wholly unjustified, even if it is, like, asshole-ish. But most of all, if just being Lysander isn't enough, his intent to use the eyed me or eat me makes him the tyrant that Octavia feared, plain and simple. 4. Burn, baby, burn. So there was a lot of talk on the last Hallerpod episode about the that motherfucker's going to burn line that Darrow says, and it just occurred to me to take Darrow literally. 
He and Severo had established a precedent in Iron Gold with the Ash Lord, and Lysander is asking for an encore after what he did to the Garter. And to honor Dylan's suggestion of having Rona kill Lysander, picture this. Darrow, Diomedes, and Severo have managed to cut Lysander off from his main body of troops and fought him wounded into a corner amidst smoking and burning rubble. Kyber and a few other Praetorians lay dead in their wake. They tell him to surrender, face his crimes before the peoples of the Republic and the Rim. The radio crackles. Rona is inbound in her Drakenjaeger with news that Thraxa and their little outfit is pulling back to the main line and they all had to go. There's more gold talk with Lysander and he starts to make some fancy space racist speech. Or maybe he decides to make a last stand and pompously asks them their collective favorite poet. Rona keys in on the shithead. This bloody damn gold. She ejects some inflammable liquid from a port or nozzle that covers Lysander and his whole area, while simultaneously and casually tossing some burning debris over. Come on, you yappy gold brows. There's no time to stand around. Sorry, I'm terrible at this accent. As they exfil the area, she asks them, How long will you lot just run in your gold before I got there? And Lysander's just in the back, smoldering. And I don't really want to end on Lysander, so let's end on a bit of Cassius Obi-Wan Kenobi parallel. As Obi-Wan, Jedi Knight, prepared to face down his erstwhile brother on Mustafar, he said, I will do what I must. Those last two words, I must, of course, began the last words Cassius, Morning Knight, would say as he prepared to face down a man that he once thought of as a brother, even if the feeling was not reciprocated. His honor remains. Thank you to Ben and Raylar Aaron for the outlet to share these reflections that would otherwise have found no other interested ear. And thank you to all of you for your patience. Hickus lupus, motherfucker. Oh! All right, we've got some DMs. Slide in there. That have been slid into. <laughs> our uh, first DM is from Ivana, our friend Ivana. Uh, thank you very much, Ivana. She says, I just want to say I feel robbed of the Cassius Volga romance that has developed in my head. But now I'm just thinking that Severo will have a new BFF to dance to uh, Cacophony with. And also uh, she will teach him stuff she knows from her heist days with F and he likes useful people. That is a good pairing. I also want Lysander's post-war punishment to be he gets his personal memories all taken away by Virginia and he has to teach middle school children <laughs> history and talk bad about his family and himself without even knowing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. That's great. Also, teaching middle schoolers sounds like punishment as well. That was good. All right. Our next DM comes from Jerry. All right. Jerry. Jerry's from Boston. And he says, if we ever find ourselves in Boston, he'll buy us a beer. Boston's so nice. We'll, we'll, Lots of brick. We'll definitely hit you up and make you buy us a beer. <laughs> now for my schemes, he says, I desperately want this series to be adapted to a live action show. The biggest hurdles would be budgeting for the VFX necessary to do the series right and the amount of seasons you need to tell the story pairing with the right producer studio is so important i think we need seth rogan and evan goldberg to become super fans of this series their work overseeing the boys is exactly what red rising deserves how do we enlist these two in our grand plan i think we do it with weed i'm down <laughs> i didn't know seth rogan had anything to do with the boys? Yeah, he's big producer. Cool. Comic book stuff. He's a cool guy. Yes, and then uh, he said we we just started the movement. Started today with this. Oh, okay. With this. Everyone, call your local senator <laughs> and tell them to tell Seth Rogen. Give him some weed and then give him a Red Rising <laughs> book and see how that goes. Yes. Jerry also sent an awesome picture of a tattoo that he got on his arm, which is legit. I like that of, one. Of the red and gold symbols together. It's nice. And then he says, realistically, I hope we can get an awesome animated show and the look and feel of Blue Eye Samurai, which is what I'm into this week. Nice. nice. Have you and, watched that yet? Uh-uh. I've, I've almost watched it. <laughs> really? I've, yeah, almost clicked on it. <laughs> nice. I've heard it's good. Okay, our next DM is from James. Hello, B&E. Oh, that's fun. B&E. B &E. I have a couple thoughts, questions. 
Uh, is there anything from these books that you have legitimately incorporated into your daily lives? Ben has talked about Akari bear witness as he flushes the toilet. <laughs> Aaron, do you have anything like that? I have incorporated golds. Don't eat everything on their plate to show that food is not their master. I have used this to not feel obligated to finish the last bite or two of any given meal when I feel full before I'm finished. Second, do you think there's a chance Lysander could be acting like an evil little shit to unite people against a common enemy? Kind of like Ozymandias, uh, th- like he does with Dr. Manhattan in the Watchmen movie. Oh, I don't think I've seen that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did I say that right? Uh, why doesn't anyone talk about how Lysander loved Darrow when we first met him and now Darrow is going to make sure that motherfucker burn. (laughs) This made me think of a segment you could talk about while waiting for Red God if you want. The difference between characters' first interactions versus their final interactions and maybe what they would say to them if they were still on the same side or still alive or whatever stopping them from communicating like civil beings. And oh yeah, what are your thoughts on this chemical weck that was talked about earlier on in Lightbringer versus the Edme. Is it different? Oh, the Green Death one? Oh. Oh. Fell. Yeah. Fell and Lyria see that remnants of the Green Death that wiped out the base of the asteroid. Thanks, James. Wow, there's so, a lot in that one. So first question is, what do you do in your daily life? I, I don't like have super specific stuff. I do, you know, like use the mind's eye. From time to time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was watching Dune to prepare. We're about to go see Dune too. Yeah. And the the fear is the mind killer. Or like I have no feelings. Yeah. <laughs> I feel nothing. the litany against fear is what it's called. It, yeah. Like that reminds me of. It the is. Mind's eye. It's supposed to. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. I do use that low, like literally when I'm like nervous about something mainly like presenting something at work or like going into interview or something like that i will not like say the words but i will think about how like i just need to let the fear kind of like flow through me and stand next to it i think about it and then you were all that remains right and uh i do use that a lot to like calm myself down and and when i'm nervous fucking nerd yeah just kidding (laughs) (laughs) it's good it's like meditating yeah I don't know if I do anything in my daily life except think about Red Rising all the time. So <laughs> every waking moment. And then second, is there a chance Lysander could be acting bad? I don't think so. Not anymore. I think he's just a little bitch. Yeah. I think he thinks that he's doing the right thing. Right. I think that he is willing to commit, commit like any amount of atrocity that he wants at this point yeah in the name of achieving this so-called peace that he wants so yeah i wouldn't put anything past him and then lastly i think ed me's like an extreme version of the green death yeah i feel like green death green, seems like it kills everyone the green colors. death i think was to me that's like a device to introduce the reader to bioweapons in the universe sure so that yeah. neck when the Eden me shows up at the end it kind of makes more sense all right, our next DM is from Ross, who sent in our video voicemail and has had some some crazy theories. Great this year, conspiracy Perfect. corner. He's he said, "I just want one single person to back me on my Cassius Mustang theory, of Pax being Darrow's illegitimate child." Do you remember that one? Yes, but I stand by <laughs> Pax is like rose gold. He's not fully gold. Uh, and then Ross also says, also my theory is no matter what happens, Darrow ends in exile on the rim, similar to Napoleon. Yeah. I can see that. I don't see like a world where like Darrow's able to just like be, be happy. No, be there oh. and everybody be okay with it. You know, Oh. it seems like he's going to have to go away. I think that he'll live happily ever after. So <laughs> great. Great. <laughs> prove me wrong <laughs> all right this next dm is from giovanni they say severo's rescue in quotes still does not make any sense to me i understand he was traded off in quotes again but he's going but him going full one man army for months is kind of dumb he's several after <laughs> all but still <laughs> 
Number two, Darrow would absolutely obliterate Apple post Breath of Stone. Yes. I think, I think we agree there. Concur. Uh, you're one for two. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Number three, uh, we need to see Diomedes, Darrow, and Severo fighting together and going absolutely apeshit on the society. Two for three, Giovanni. That's a pretty good batting yeah, average. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> for your TM. <laughs> we like Severo. <laughs> I don't mind it as much. I can see why it it is a little convenient, but I don't know. It's fun. It's fun. And, and then, I think it makes sense. I like fun. And also... And I do think like the most uh, believable part of that to me is him waging a one-man campaign. And cutting off and dicks, the vents. But they're too yeah. heavy. And being a fucking ears. scary a menace. person. Yeah. yeah. So we'll agree to disagree, but thank you for the DM regardless. All right. You want to take this next one? Sure. Next is from Alec. Hey, Ben and Aaron, longtime howler and listener of the pod. I just got to ask Pierce a question when he was on the Lightbringer tour in DC and was thinking about how Pierce is going to wrap up everything in Red God. We know Lysander is going to challenge Atalantia to a duel and also has the oracles from Mustang post Phobos, but knowing him, he'll want to try to force Atalantia to admit to killing his parents before formally challenging her to a duel. My theory is that Lysander is going to be forced into admitting he knew about Atlas and the Rim, (laughs) and that uh, will be what causes the reformers and Julia's block of the 200 to abandon him. This would likely happen after his duel where he kills her by using the mind's eye, but his condition will be severely fractured. I think that rather than be willing to fight with Loon and face the combined Volk Republic Rim Alliance, they sue for conditional peace and turn over Lysander to pay for his crimes in the Rim. Mars will become the de facto economic power of the solar system due to its near monopoly on helium and would use that to politically force the other planets and moons to abolish their hierarchy, but we'd see those spheres become independently run, much like the uh, Confederacy. This would become the new spheres of influence that was alluded to in Lightbringer, and we'd see an eventual last peace between the sovereign governments working in relative peace to rebuild after the war. Let me know your thoughts. And I hope we see that pixie Lysander die to Diomedes sniveling and pissing in his suit. (laughs) Thank you, Alec. That was great. That was a good ending. Mm, Do we need red God? (laughs) Alec just wrote it. Yeah. I I do think those oracles are going to come into play. That's, I like the idea that it's like, secret versus secret like yeah. you could my parents well you know you partnered with atlas to murder everyone in the rim yeah and i just wonder like how much of an effect that would have on the reformers like they're all making a lot of money off of that venture that's true but there's like obviously feelings there and we I know like, like palace kind of knows yeah. i don't know and Maybe. we know like cicero would be upset about, about you know the righteousness of that or whatever yeah. But whether that would like have them change allegiance, I guess we'll see. We've talked about him maybe being, you know, a problem down the road for Lysander. So Mm -hmm. it's a good call out. Uh, Our next DM is from Steven. After Severo is free of Abominadrius, are we sure that something wasn't done to his brain to make him sort uh, some sort of sleeper agent? I only think this might be a possibility because he was definitely threatened with the altering of his brain and memories, then pretty much sold off back into the galaxy. Then we don't hear much of anything about Abominadrius through most of the story. Could Pierce be setting up a bloody damn gut-riching showdown between Severo and his brother Darrow? God, I hope not. But who knows? Thanks for your consideration. Howlers never bow, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, I think I think we kind of possibilities floating out there. We think that something could happen. We also though think that if it was to kill why Darrow, w- why wouldn't you have already done it? Right. I don't know. And then, yeah, the strategic strategery of killing just like Victor or kill, having him kill his own family, you know. Eh, like. And it kind of falls apart if you think Abominadrius is 
feeding Mustang information. If it like, was, why would he be helping her and yeah. then do something with Severo? I could see it like Severo kills his family, which would be awful and terrible. And I really hope that doesn't happen. But I could see it if it, if it was just something like truly personal between Abom and Adrius and Severo. Like, I could see him having him do that. But otherwise, I don't see a lot of reason to it. And I, I agree. Like, I feel like he already would have killed Daryl. If it was Daryl. But I guess we shall see. Our next DM is from Brandon. Brandon says, I need Red God to feature scenes that have Darrow talking to Cassius. Either flashbacks to time on the Arky or him conversing with his dead friend and still being a guiding light. I'm not ready to say bye just yet. Daryl needs his curly haired conscience. I love this. I hope we yeah. get a, a never before seen flashback to their time on the Arky. Just the whole book. Especially like with the flashbacks that we're getting in, we got in Lightbringer. We got a couple, like we got a, a new EO moment. We got a new right. moment from Fitchner. I think there's a possibility of this occurring for sure. Let's see it. Next up is our buddy Allie from Cali. Allie from Cali. From HowlerCon. <laughs> uh, we sang karaoke together. It was fun. And it's a video message. Hello, Howlers. I am doing a video message because voicemails are high pressure. You can't, like, if you mess up, you can't redo it. So you get to see my face. I'm glad you've uh, integrated this. So this is Allie, Allie from Cali, my little mnemonic thing, whatever, rhyme. Except plot twist, I'm not in California. I'm in Spain. So I'm doing like a work internship, study abroad thing. And it's been really lovely to listen to you guys while I've been here, especially in the beginning because I didn't know anybody and it's a new language and you know, all of that. So it's been nice to have that piece of home, that howler familiarity. And yeah, this, this has been such a great season. I've loved the guests. I've been getting into you know, words and whiskey and high key obsessed and Akari bear witness has now become like a, a chronic ever present part of my internal monologue. I've enjoyed the tidbits and, but I do think, and oh, and yeah, Nate, Nate's uh, voicemail a couple weeks back about the sports ball matchup. That was gold. Nate, you're so charismatic and witty. And, and yeah, and also I was really impressed with all the Akari bear witness jokes people <laughs> wrote in. That was killing me. So on that note, though, I feel like there needs to be an advisory label when listening to the pod in public because I have just like straight cackled sometimes and gotten a lot of weird looks from people at many different moments. I, str I straight up, there was like when you guys were like, she's wise, she's wonderful. I was like, oh, Heather's on the pod. I like, I audibly said, Heather. And these three women like snapped their heads to me and gave me like, Criminal, bombastic side eye. Sorry, okay. So yes, just listen at, you know, your own risk or whatever. Own embarrassment in my case. So yes, one final thing I wanted to say. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna comment on any light bringer feelings because I already gave you guys a robust uh, dissertation basically in the beginning of this. Um, season. So I'll save my comments for Red God prediction. But there is a um, holiday here called San Jordi. It's on April 23rd. And basically some of the lore is that there it's the history revolves around a dragon, a knight slaying a dragon for a princess. And when he does, the dragon like bleeds roses. And so somehow that equates to today. Men give women roses. There's like roses all over the city and and women give men books. So there's, there's roses and books all over the city. Yes, it's a little machista that the women get roses and men get books. So I'm gonna ignore that. I mean, it's like, hey, men, yes, educate yourself, read. I'm all for that. But women like reading too. So, so my plan, this is the master plan, the howler plan. I have gone around to different bookstores in the area and I've only found like kind of singular copies of Golden Sun or Iron Gold in in Spanish in like at local stores. So I'm going to have to plan B, shift gears. Okay, you know, we just we roll with the punches. We work with what we're given. And I'm gonna have to do a bulk order of red rising in for sure a ton of Spanish, maybe some English. And if if it's if it's been printed in Catalan, Catalan, 
And I'm basically just going to be proselytizing the words of Pierce Brown. Like this is really my moment, our moment to spread the, spread the word, spread the gospel, like convert howlers. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And I just needed you guys to know that that's what I'm going to be doing. And if there are any howlers locally who would like to join me in this imperative, please let us join forces because I really feel called. I really feel called to this purpose. So I will let you guys know how it goes, but you know where I'll be. I will be disseminating books at scale. So I can't wait. I'll take pictures. I'll post them, whatever, whatever. If you're in the area, I am Miss Alley Pants on Instagram. Find me. We can do this together. So anyway, pod, thank you for your service. As always, this has been a phenomenal season. Like I mentioned, Akari, bear witness, Ali out, Omnis, Vir Lupus, ow. Thank you, Allie from Cali. Allie from Spain now. Why is Allie in Spain? <laughs> the rain in Spain <laughs> falls brightly on the plain. Ben, do you know that one? No. Oh my God. <laughs> what was your childhood? <laughs> it was completely different from yours. <laughs> <laughs> Boring. <laughs> no. When is it? April 23rd? I think that's what she said. Was yeah. that the date? Yeah. Okay. Uh, howlers in Spain. Yes. Get your books out. Do you just like give them to random men, or do you like leave them out? I think you give them to men you think are hot, probably. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking the red roses everywhere. It's it's like a friendly day of red doves, <laughs> <laughs> but red roses. Yeah. Instead of blood. That's awesome. Thank uh, you, Allie from yes. Spain. Doesn't rhyme as well. <laughs> <laughs> Join in from Allie. That was. A very nice email. Thank you for all your kind voice words. Voice message or a video yeah. message. Yeah, video message. Why did I say email? Sorry. Thank you, Ali. All right. I'll see you at HallerCon next year. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a couple more DMs left. Here we go from Joey. Says, you guys mentioned how Cicero did not like what Lysander did with the growers and suggested a betrayal might happen in the future. I agree that maybe he's against the burning, but I don't know if that makes him pro-reformer. I don't think a gold like him is ever going to agree to color equality. If anything, I could see more of a neutro, uh, sorry, neutral Arcos style neutrality. What do you think? That sounds good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was actually thinking it's the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane. I, I messed up the words and I didn't actually hear what you just said. Extremely important. <laughs> what is, Joey's what talking think? about Cicero. Okay. And that he thinks that he's not going to full up, like full on betray Lysander just because he still probably believes in the hierarchy. The blood. Uh, but that he might just kind of like step back and take like a Lauren or Arcos kind of neutral just yeah. step out of the entire situation yeah i agree i think cicero he's too purely into the he's definitely big on the pyramid pyramid but the society he, he's also into like honor you know and yeah. lysander's not been honorable he really likes the shepherd stuff yes yeah i think that's a good call out from joey all right thank you um, joey we're going to move on to our final DM. This one's from Laura. Laura's from Germany. Awesome. Wie geht's, meine Freund? <laughs> okay. So let's see. Laura s says they absolutely loved Lightbringer. Took a few days off work, pre-ordered it, picked it up early, got some weird looks because Red Rising isn't very big over there yet, yet. And then she said that she really appreciates us because small community over there. So we appreciate you, Laura. Thanks for listening. So Laura's going to host us in Germany. Yes. There's another person that we can go Perfect. visit. Yeah, we so many I would friends. love to go to a beer garden. Yeah. I said beer with the I. Did, did you hear it? Yeah. Beer. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. it was... I like Hefeweizen. <laughs> <laughs> Are you German? Am I German? <laughs> Uh, Laura says, my favorite scenes were definitely the Siege of Phobos, Victor being a badass, don't fear for me, pity them, chills, literal chills, mm -hmm. 
Virginia in battle operating mode is just amazing. And the green lady chugging her whiskey, flipping Lysander off before being boiled in her own skin is just Badass. chef's kiss writing. I haven't stopped thinking about it since. Also, the sheer amount of dick jokes in this book had me <laughs> screaming laughing. <laughs> I appreciate a good dick joke too, Laura. As for my predictions for Red God, I don't have any. I do, however, have a lot of anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Me too. <laughs> I don't want, well, any one of the good guys to die anymore. Cassius was just too much. I also finally look forward to the Lysander chapters again because as a Lysander hater from day one, I'm so happy we got over the will he, won't he stuff. No, he won't be redeemed, not even Darth Vader style. He's the bad guy and there are no doubts about it. And the triumvirate was the dumbest idea ever. <laughs> Diomedes is a tough guy, but definitely not the brightest. Still a sweet cookie. Love my moon lords. Last one on my wish list for Red God is a Victra versus Atalantia duel. I didn't know yes. I needed this, but listening to last week's episode, I now I know now that I need it. I need it. Almost for lupus. Thanks, Laura. Uh, all right. And that's the Howler mailbag. We cleared it out. Cleared the dust. It's it's all been said. We appreciate you guys for writing in so much. So this long, farewell. <laughs> I'll be to say good night. This episode is all about you all and how much you contribute to our show. It's it's really cool. We appreciate. Thank you, you all, and we love all of you as well. Yes, we super appreciate yes. it. Lots of kind words. Could not do and, this without you guys. Um, I have open BFF slots. <laughs> She's got. I ton. love. Ask Ben. I love making new friends. <laughs> it's does. my favorite activity. All right. You know what it's time for? What are we into this week? Aaron, what are you into? I fucking nailed that one. <laughs> I, first of all, am into a viral video with one of our very own Howlers. Yes. You might have seen a few episodes ago I wore this. <laughs> helmet? This helmet. Remember this? <laughs> do you remember so uh jesse from red prince rising made ben and i both our own helmets and then jesse went fucking mega viral <laughs> Just... you've probably seen this video and don't even know it's him it's him riding a sandworm in his still suit into the amc or wherever the yeah, movie, it was theater. Like a movie theater in oklahoma um just fucking sick he's on jimmy fallon it's crazy. I mean, Pierce Brown's re retweeting it like it's insane. That's a howler in there yeah. in that dude costume. And you can follow Jesse at Red Prince Rising. And it's red print, like you're printing a piece of paper. Yes. Red Prince Rising. Jesse also makes really cool Red Rising like video montage mm -hmm. uh, content. And uh, he's really nice. We hung out. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I had to call that out because now I know a famous person. So. <laughs> and then I'm into a musical artist. I saw him at Jazz Fest in New Orleans last year. He's, his name is Billy Strings. Mm. And he fucking rips on guitar and I think banjo and mandolin, but definitely guitar. <laughs> He's like a picker. Picker. Yeah. He's also super cute. And uh, my favorite song of is the most popular song but dust in a baggie it's folky billy strings nice he's blown up right now ben who what are you into this week i am also into some music a uh, new album came out from uh an, a new artist named lake j uh album's called dizzy and so lake j is this guy named caden lake james who is or was in one of my favorite bands of all time called Twin Peaks. I've probably talked about them before on yeah. What Are You Into this week. Twin Peaks, incredible fucking band. The pandemic got them. They were out touring and then they stopped touring because of the pandemic and just have never gotten back together. Didn't you meet them outside a bar? Yes. And they're fucking awesome. And it's just one of the saddest things that's ever it happened happens, to me. Man. You know? To and you for <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I love this band. They don't make music anymore, though. But now he has put out his own solo album, oh. and it's really good. And it's cool just to see like his influence. Like all all the members of Twin Peaks write songs, 
So it's kind of cool to put his influence together against like their old work and see, see his new work, but it's definitely a cool album worth checking out. Very vibey. Caden is like very melodic. So good melodies. I would say it's like a perfect, like lazy summer afternoon, kind of sitting on your porch, drinking a cocktail type Sounds album. Like a good time. Yeah. Let's, let's all do that. Yeah. This so summer. Check it out. Dizzy is the album name and then it's lake j artist. lake lake j like a lake yeah nice great right. that's it for this week's episode what's coming up next week on howler pod we will be taking a break for a while sure it's up to ben so dm ben personally we will be back i do have there. some ideas percolating for the next season percolating uh so we'll start working on those uh and we'll be back i'll date. be back you know, have you, you know how uh in the james bond movies they say like james bond shall return in no the next i movie? didn't know that okay well, that's us that's us howler pod shall did return did you hear what i did though that was a movie called the terminator i've never heard of it yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right howler special thanks to miles for the episode art nick didn't join us today but thanks again nick for yes. all of the quote work just what an incredible performance by nick yes. all year long subscribe to the youtube channel come on ben it's weird when you do it not at the same time okay sorry thank you oh. raising the roof we're raising you're... the roof <laughs> if you're not watching you're missing out <laughs> Uh, follow us at HowlerPod, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Etsy. Email us, HowlerPod at gmail.com. Voicemail is 1-800-516-1540. Tell us you love us and we'll be your best friend. <laughs> tell Ben you want to hang out with him. <laughs> <laughs> Find links to all this and more at HowlerPod.com. Do as Allie does and spread the word. Yeah. Give people books. I think I kind of imagine her like throwing them out a window. <laughs> That'd be fun. Hey, you there. Hit someone with a book and then they'll read it. <laughs> and rate and review us five stars only. If you don't give us five stars only, then you're a see you next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs>